Are you drinking out of a vase? Holly, that's my um, rose vase. Absolute ripper. I no, love I it. thought it was a cup. I reckon it's just a good cup for my pet. I'll get six pet That's amazing. How would you think no, that's don't a cup? Mine. I don't mind. I need a drink. I don't. think that is a great idea. It's really good. <laughs> I hope you washed it because I put my flowers in it. It actually is really cool. Can you get a cup more? Every evening in Australia. Oh, this is going to be interesting. More than four million of us choose to spend the night in front of the telly. Oh, how good is this? No. But have you ever wondered what other people are watching? You're making me watch this. The whole thing's sickening. So true. <laughs> Find out what people thought about what was on in the last seven days. Pushing boundaries, this show. I'm bloody obsessed with this season. Why do we still watch this? Because it's the best show on television. This week saw the return of three of our most popular reality shows. Oh my god, I got shivers. Summer Bay welcomed Sam Frost. There's a frost in town. And Hughesy was back on our screens with a brand new show. I love Dave Hughes. A new year means new beginnings for some of our houses. Adam's moved in with his girlfriend Rachel. You know how I know that you still live here? Because your side table is a mini fridge. Yep, that's my bit. Anastasia's renovating, so she and her chair have moved in with her mum. If I want to bring a man home, what am I going to do? Uh, no. There's nothing I'm going to have to... Go hey, to what happens house? if your mum brings someone home? I'll kill her. Wayne and Tom are busy planning their long-awaited wedding. If ever we get married under the sea in a shark cage? You would be screaming. And rather than walking down the aisle, you've got to swing between that cage and my cage. What? And if you make it to me, then I'll marry you. Why do oh. I have to swim? Well, you can swim, I can't. <laughs> and Holly Dalton is now in her first year of university. Three out of the four people on the couch have been to uni. Oh, shut the fuck up. I have been to uni too. No, you, you know, you, you drove into Melbourne Uni the other day. Every January, after the tennis, is an event that's become as inevitable as, well, getting your car registered. Oh, fuck. It's back. The return of MKR. Sounds like freaking Transformers, which is ironic because this show's been the same for seven <laughs> years. They do that same walk every time, year after year. Back they come, the music go. goes, it's the same bloody oh, music, it's, it's the same thing. MKL 2018 with Bag Baby. Hooray! It's the same. No bloody formula. It's, not, it's new. Instead of having three teams of 12, they're going to have two teams of 16. Ooh. My Kitchen Rules starts now. Relax. Hi, I'm Josh. Hi, I'm Nick. And we're Italian Brothers. Don't be fooled by the Spanish music. <laughs> the first couple to cook are Italian. They've always got these cliché teams. <laughs> we're not Italian. Are you joking? Do you see their title? So, Italiano like Brothers. Italiano Brothers. Yes. Hey, guys, you're not ethnic enough. Oh, can you put an O on the end of Italian? <laughs> they go like this. They go, mamma mia. A bunch of the spaghetti. Cantare. Whoa. Then when that guy wanted to punch me in Florence when I did I that to him, I wonder be. why. Ready to enjoy this Italiano feast is a demographic mix of dinner guests that have been dropped off down the street. They've got, always got the Asians, then they've got the loved up couple, always. You'll have two young girls, you may have a gay couple. And then you've got the bitches and the ones that want to be on TV for 15 minutes. Let the shenanigans begin! If I was with someone and they said, let the shenanigans begin, I would know it's going to be a shit night. Here we go. The ride's about to begin. Did you just push the window? You pressed on the wall. There's no doorbell there. Oh, God, I have to rewind that. <laughs> now that everyone's arrived, we get to know this eclectic crowd including the team that can't cook. I can't cook. <laughs> no, not really. What? 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 Can't cook. Sure. It's a cooking oh, show. The team that can't eat. I can't eat it. Done. Can't eat it. Give me a freaking spell. I don't do fried food. You know what you can't eat? You Clorox. And the team that looks like this. What? Oh, my God, did you see those lips? And Emma's got a secret talent. <laughs> Oh. 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 Do that again. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
All right, I'll give her that. That's pretty awesome. If you're motivating her, she could decapitate you. But things really heat up when the team with the moving breasts takes issue with the team that can't eat. I'd pick you up out of your chair and throw you out. I love dummy spits. Why do you want to start beef with us? Because you're jealous? I shouldn't say this. I want violence at the table. Because they like this dress, and I'm like, you wish you could fit in it. What? What's so good about that dress? Look like you got it from Kmart. We might look pretty. No, you don't. But we do have a bite. So I don't know if this is actually about cooking this season. Don't forget those Italiano boys back in the kitchen. We're Italian. Who are cooking a goat. For our main? Goat. Goat? Back home goat. in Italy. Goat. <laughs> goat. Yum. Home cooked goat. Oh, nice goat. The main course looks quite goaty. Yeah. That's funny because it's goat. The goat Q Manu. There's not enough sauce. There wasn't enough sauce. Ah. Uh... Goat gone. Now they got a panna cotta. I want the panna cotta. Our dessert, the white chocolate panna cotta. Everyone does a panna cotta. As soon as you say panna cotta. Panna cotta. Panna cotta. Panna cotta. Panna cotta. Panna cotta. It's really just fun to say panna cotta. Panna cotta. Panna cotta. What is it, a blancmange or a... It's a panna cotta. Panna cotta no? it was more like panna slopper. <laughs> They didn't like the texture. Well, I don't like the texture of your face. I didn't really love anything. She can't get her lips around it. Now it's time for the scores. I'm 87. Out of what? Out of 100. That's a good score. 100. No, 110. 130? I don't know. Who cares? It's all building to the explosive clash. Wow. Buckle up. It'll be pretty explosive. Nobody liked it. Don't miss a minute. Are we going to watch it? My word, we are. It's the same repertoire every time. I feel like it's like our marriage is just never ending. Ugh. Well, the doors there don't let it hit your <laughs> ass when you leave. At Mick and Dies, Mick started the year by making the most of his gym membership. <laughs> God, I don't know what to do with it, but anyway. I work Enjoy. out. Oh, really? What do you think I do? I've got no idea. And Patrick Del Pachitra has a new pastime. Dad bought a metal detector. He paid like 100 bucks for it. Buying something like that, you need to be trained on it. As there's several sounds that you need to sort of de <laughs> detect. And there's probably there's only one sound you heard and the sound of nothing. On Tuesday, we watched a new panel show hosted by comedian Dave Hughes. Welcome to Hughesy. We have a problem. Hughes, eh? I love Dave Hughes. He is seriously one of the ugliest people I've ever seen. That's a real issue. Uh, I feel like he's talking as if he's constantly pushing out his shit. Let's give it up for Harley Brown and Edmund. Oh, oh, Ed Edmund is so funny. Zim Hussain, <laughs> Julia Morris. I think Julia Morris is actually very funny. The show has a simple concept. Viewers write in with their problems for Husey and the panel to solve. We are here to solve people's issues. I should be on this show. I love telling people about their problems. <laughs> George from Lawn in Victoria. He says, my girlfriend is very attractive. Oh. Good on you, George. <laughs> um, but she has a slight moustache. Oh. Oh. Oh, this is a bit awkward. I don't know how to approach this. Do I tell her about the moustache? What do you do? I how do you solve it? As I'm kissing her, going in for it. Are you going to wait for that moment? Yeah, I'll be like, hey, is that me or you? This is why he hasn't got a girlfriend. My wife's very attractive too, George, um, but and she once had a little bit of upper lip hair. Mm -hmm. We eventually, yeah, rang her up on the radio and confronted her with oh. it. <laughs> <laughs> women, don't all women uh, have that issue? Oh, well, we live with mustaches. Is Get she a wax. Here, Get a wax laser. I'll give you the number. Some people don't care. Yes. They're just like, check this out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I get a whisker there. Yeah, so do I. God, that must be hereditary. Can you see it? Not as much as mum's. Oh, as much as that. Mum's Italian's coming out. Why do Italian men all have moustaches? Why? So they can look like their mothers. <laughs> I think my solution is this compromise. Wax the moustache, wax the balls. Oh. oh, that is a total feminist, totally stupid. Men aren't walking around the street showing their balls, are they? Next, the program deals with a viewer's kissing conundrum.
My lover of two years refuses to kiss me on the lips. What? Sex, beautiful, beautiful. Can't complain. See stars. Yeah, like how do you just have sex without kissing? I think that's really like rapey. Uh, so he won't kiss her on. He won't kiss her on the lips. What? what? He won't kiss her on the lips during sex. Talking about the lips on her face. Oh. I know where you're going. How often are you kissing your, your partner? Oh, like a proper passionate Oh, pash, pash. A couple of times a week. Yeah, well. That's nice. Tongue in. Yeah. We kiss all the time. Oh, I know. We do. We just can't do it in front of our kids. Oh, oh don't. Oh, don't. Oh. The panel then moves on to how to have sex when you have small children. Because when you've got kids, you've got to keep the doona right up and around you. <laughs> <laughs> Dan's coming at me like a stingray. <laughs> And then the baby kicks off. And then the dog comes in like that. What's happening? What's happening? <laughs> so true. When you're always small. I don't want to hear that. <laughs> We're doing oh, this yeah. in the kitchen sink. She said, she said at the same time, can you do the dishes as well? <laughs> Guys, that's it. That's our show. That was, that was fantastic. <laughs> to be honest, I can't be bothered about the show. I really liked it. Did you? Oh, God, it's hangs better than that bloody other one Helia tried to do. Love you, Dave. You nailed that show. Hey, Mill. How's your new career going? <laughs> <laughs> Millie's a model. <laughs> what are you modelling, Mill? Is it Cleo, Cosmo? Stop. What is it? No, it's mouth guard. <laughs> <laughs> Last week, I'm a Celeb was back, and we got to find out who was going to rumble in the jungle. Are you yeah. excited? I can't wait to find out who who's going to be on this season. Out, the There's a rumour that Bernard Tomic is going in. When would he have time? He's well, counting uh, his money, isn't he? Well, the wait is over. Our fresh celebrities have arrived. What's wrong with his face? Does he have stubble? I Looks like, like he's got red mud on his face. And this year, we are dumping them all across South Africa for their journey to the jungle. The whole thing's a bit, a bit daunting and that sort of thing, but it's also exciting. Shannon, no, no way! No way! You gotta leave! Chill out. Oh, nice. Love a bit of grassy knoll in my life. And it's supposed to be some international star or something, too. I'm Tiffany. Hello! Tiffany. Who's that? I don't know this chick. I'm a singer songwriter. Is there a bunch of people saying, like, oh, I know her? No. Oh, oh, oh my god! You think you're alone now. There was a housewife. Hello! A footballer, an actor. Oh my gosh, it's Brad from Kath and Kim! Oh. And a model. I'm a big Kath and Kim fan. She's a dance. So it's pretty cool. Pretty big. Hey. The tits. <laughs> She said she's a dits. No. <laughs> the final group of celebs introduced included... Kerry Armstrong. She's lovely. What the hell's she doing on this show? Actress-comedian Fiona O'Loughlin. She's funny. She's a recovering alcoholic. Yes. She actually reminds me of you. It's different. And, of course... Uh, it's Count the Millions. What's his name? Hi, I'm Bernard Tomic. I'm a professional tennis player. Good. Can you lend me some money? <laughs> <laughs> I love Kerry. You know, I have amazing houses in, in Australia, in Istanbul, in Monaco, in Miami. You already sound like a knob. Don't you reckon he looks like Mr. Squiggle? Completely different. He looks like a prize <laughs> pig. Then it was straight into the first challenge with all eyes on Tomic. Oh, no, no, that's not good. No, tap out. That is hey, not good. Now, cool. let's see if it strikes. <laughs> oh, my God, it really bit him. You've got this, Bernard. Oh! Even the snake hates Bernard. Oh my god, no, I can't, I can't. It's not funny, Chris. When the vet's doing a face like that, then you know you're in trouble. Sorry, Bernard. Come on in. Giving Bernard the night to lick his wounds, we returned Monday night to find out. Can Tomic hack it or will he yell? I'm a celebrity. Can we out here? The episode kicked off with our celebs getting to know Bernie. If you retired now, though, would you be honestly happy with everything you've achieved in the game? Me? No. 
Because I, because I, because I could have been top five. I could have won some slams. Exactly. So. Shoulda, coulda, woulda. If I coulda, woulda, should have. I didn't have a childhood and I didn't have a life since I was eight, nine years old. I don't really have any sympathy for the guy because you can stand up and say, I don't want to do this anymore. Like, I've got some level of sympathy for him because I feel like because he didn't have a childhood, this is him being a teenager. The next challenge saw Tomic and Fiona teaming up in the Tucker trial. You are both going to get to play on this obscenely high obstacle course. Oh, shit. Bernard, you're going to have to wear these. Have you seen these? All of a sudden, hey. everything is upside down. You become so disorientated. That would be like vertigo. Where the hell I, am I? I'd vomit. I'd vomit if I wore those. I would vomit. If you were to walk straight ahead, where exactly your feet are now, you are not going to fall. What okay? would you do? I'd just yeah. close my eyes. That's right. He's like a puppet. He is oh, Mr. Squiggle. I reckon I could do that with a cocktail in my hand. Oh, oh Jesus! Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. I think I'm gonna be sick. They've stitched him up here. Karma. Oh, that's what it is. Do you want to say I'm a celebrity? Get me out of here. What are you feeling there, Bernard? I'm so sick. Just have to say the I'm a celebrity. Get me out of here. Oh. Oh. Yeah, that's probably the toughest challenge I've ever seen. Yeah, that's tough. I bet you Roger Federer could get all six stars. <laughs> There's no question that what happened on that bridge really shook Bernard to the core. Mm. I don't think I can, uh, I can do it. I think uh, it was best if I go, no? Spat the dummy. He doesn't deal with failure, does he? If you don't want to be labelled a quitter by the entire Australian population, don't leave. 24 hours later... Back in the jungle, are we? The big question still remained. Is he leaving? Surely he's staying. So he's back back on. I'm so happy I came here to meet you a bunch of people. Obviously, I did this for an experience to change my life. You talk a lot, you've been there for four weeks. You've been there two days. I need to be competing and playing in what I do best, and uh, that's why I've, uh, I've decided to leave. <gasps> oh, wow, so he's gone. Well, I never. I've had gastro that's lasted longer. I am just thank you for, for everyone for supporting me the last few days. Keep going, oh, keep going. No, no, no. Thank you, guys. I feel sorry for him. Yeah, I do too. I'm a celebrity. Get me out of here. First person ever to say it on the Australian version. Bye-bye, Bernard. Yeah, oh, it's like that. Yeah. And remember, you got to drop the other four fingers. <laughs> Well, I hope he finds happiness. I think he yeah. deserves to. At the Jacksons, it's a big year for youngest child, Nate. How many sleeps until you start kindy? <gasps> How many sleeps? Four sleeps till you start big school. The Silbury's have recently returned from a family holiday in Sydney. Did you see Mum's face when she bumped into the Prime Minister at Bondi? Oh, she was overwhelmed. Hilarious. It was definitely love at first sight. I felt like I'd sinned. And Matt and Sarah Marie are now newlyweds. Does that girl say married right now? Party. Yeah. I feel like a rock concert at one stage. Maybe had his shirt off. A stage diving. Stage diving. Stage. On Thursday night, we watched a little bit of baking goodness on Lifestyle. It's my favourite show. What is it? Oh, this is baking, isn't it? Because you've got to bake. What gave it away? The great bake off? Thing. We started with 12 home bakers and sadly we've lost two, which leaves us with 10. What? We've lost two of them? These guys have to be outrageous because everyone else is so polite. But they have to be very PG outrageous. Do you prefer two fingers or four? Mm, two in the morning. Four in the evening. This week, Matt and Maggie... Oh, oh snap! Me too! Oh! <laughs> Ooh, savage! You're getting hot in here? Well, I think that's just a little bit suggestive, don't you? It's biscuit week! The contestants go inside to hear what challenge they'll be doing and judge Matt Moran picks up where the hosts left off. No matter what they say, size does matter. Oh, mm. bloody oath, it does. And I prefer red than brown. Yeah, I prefer red too. 
Okay. Mel and I are very happy to nibble any oversized ones back into shape for you. What? Bakers. What we is this? Two There's two so many into windows. I feel dirty. The last two technical bakes have been Maggie's recipe. I love Maggie. Lots of colour and texture. We have a Maggie beer book. Behind you. <laughs> I got it signed. Maggie, what? I got it signed for Rachel. For Rachel, good food counts. That bit is from Maggie. Adam wants to say he surely earns some brownie points with this Maggie beer. Brownie points! Yeah, but it doesn't count if you self-congratulate in the message. Matt and Maggie would like you to bake a biscuit jigsaw puzzle. So normally I would just use my finger and, and stick it in and, you know, but I thought I'd get the toys out today and, uh... <laughs> <laughs> jam with a jam. Oh, he's doing a dance. He needs to not ever dance again. Oh. He's going to be single for a long time. <laughs> My jigsaw puzzle is inspired by Solar System. I he's really... in a Solar System because he's out there. Marcus's From Another Planet puzzle will have a vanilla shortbread biscuit oh, with a white shit. chocolate clay. Also making a jigsaw biscuit is this ginger dressed like a ninja. Oh, classic. You're only a headband away from being a cool guy. And this very French man called Max. Uh, I will do something very original and make an Eiffel Tower. Eiffel Tower, of course you are. Is he French? Is he French? Biscuit for me is different. Is say, biscuit. Is he French? Oui, oui, oui. I'm a, I'm a romantic guy. Uh, so hot. If he's good, I'll probably make it for my fiancé. He's got a fiancé. But he's French, so that doesn't mean I'm... Um, that means he's available. My nickname's Grizz, as in the Grizzly Bear. So you never think he's a baker, would you? Or like a lumberjack. Chris's puzzled Grizzly, coffee chocolate body, a peanut butter snout. Oh. Oh. This is funky. This yeah. is what I want to say. Now, for the last piece of the puzzle, it's tasting time. So gorgeous. That's sick. That looks fantastic. The poor. The poor. Mm. Oh. These guys floating. <laughs> oh, what that hot mess? It looks like I could have done that. That's not a puzzle at all. It's a little bit wonky. When I went to Is Paris, I saw the Eiffel Tower after a few drinks, there, and it looked like a little bit wonky. Yeah, I get this I actually do a good French accent, don't I? I don't know, man. <laughs> That's a shocker. How are these jigsaws? Looks like polar poop there. <laughs> that doesn't look very could nice. Be polar poop. Oh, that's Uranus. Yep. <laughs> no, Would you like that? No, milk? That's, that's Mercury. That's Uranus. Ha ha ha. Yeah, even I can't make a joke at Uranus. We've been doing that since we're in kindergarten. <laughs> <laughs> I want the pieces you pick up Uranus. <laughs> I have the unwelcome job of announcing who will be leaving us this week. Uranus guy for sure. We will miss you. So we're going solo poop. Yeah, at last. Max. Oh! oh no. So Jesus. Jesus. Au revoir. Oh, they got rid of the only cute looking Frenchman. Such a shame to see Max go. Don't talk shit. You just voted him out. See, that's a good show. It did remind me we need to do some cooking. Yeah, we should do some cooking. Yeah. I should have saved my egg white the other day that I threw down the sink. One egg white. <sighs> Yeah, you should have saved it, Mum. Save it. Never know what you can do with one egg boy. Will you stop moving the, with the pillows? You're deliberately doing it now. I am. I'm going to smash your elbow. <laughs> no, not my pointy. Oh, point. so not you did it again. Not my pointy elbows. You have got the most pointiest elbows I've ever seen. No, I sharpen them. I start by not sharpen them just for you. You right now? Okay. I'm just going to put the finger chain, put the telly on. We live in. I'm Dr. Javed Abdelmunad. I'm going to find out if by turning a class of seven year old primary school children gender neutral, I can change the way they think about themselves. Can our kids go gender free? That would be nice. Oh. Oh, this is going to be a doco on equality. This is going to be wild. Yeah, wow. Well. Yeah, you might need a very stiff drink to watch this. We live in a country where men and women are meant to be equal. No, so I, I'm sorry, but biologically and physically, we cannot be the same. Unless a man can give birth through his ass, 
Dr. Abdulmanum starts by finding out the children's attitudes towards gender roles. Hello, everyone. Hello. <laughs> Aww, so cute. Men are better because they're stronger and they got more jobs. Oh. Yeah. Why is it only boys can play football? Because they're fitter and stronger. They can fight lots of people. Oh, obviously she hasn't watched Wonder Woman. Or been to a lesbian bar. <laughs> Men are better like being in charge. I think boys are cleverer than girls. Oh my god, it's so, so sad. Is this coming from the parents? Normally, it's the man that goes out and brings the bacon. Why? When I used to grow up, that was how it happened. But now, boys and girls are sort of equal these days. Here we go, I'm going to show you this. And on this are four jobs. A ballet dancer, a magician, a makeup artist, and a mechanic. I know what they're doing. They're trying to say what they'll, if they'll draw a boy or a girl. Your magician is a mister. He's going to be mister and then bubbles. OK. My car mechanic. I might call him Diamond Steve. <laughs> Almost without exception, the mechanics and magicians are men, and the makeup artists and dancers women. I've never seen a girl motor mechanic. I've never seen a girl magician. It's surprising how fixed the children's ideas are. Well, you know what? When I was at school, all we were taught to do was primary school and nursing. I wasn't allowed to do dancing because only my sister could do that. When I was changing from my physio course to my teaching course, and Dad's like, that's a better suited job for you because you're a girl. I have no memory of that. So I want to show them an alternative. Hello, so my name's Rob, and I'm a makeup artist. And I'm a car mechanic. I'm a dancer. A magician! Meeting role models can be hugely influential because what we learn from them is more likely to change our behaviours and beliefs. Well, that's probably good. I can't yeah. see there's too much harm in that. I reckon I need to add some of this sort of stuff to, like, normal school. See, that's going to make a difference. Yeah. Yeah. I don't care. Next, I want to challenge what the children think about strength. I like this. Ronnie, what do you think you'll score? Ten. Our test showed that the girls massively underestimated what they thought they could achieve. See, if a girl gets too cocky, they're called bitchy. Tiffany, what do you think you might score? Five. But with a simple demonstration, I can challenge that. Lexi estimated that she would score just five out of ten. You can do it, Lexi. Oh, come on, darling. She'll let the hammer go and knock a kid out behind her. Kid <laughs> 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 it, sweetie. Go on. <laughs> Seems to me like 10 was a little easy. <laughs> you all right, Lexi? You a bit overwhelmed? Yeah. Because oh. I didn't think I could do it at first. Yeah, and... I don't think happy. anyone believes in Lexi at home. Yeah, at your house. Next up, Riley. You what? One of these boys is going to crack it if a girl gets higher than me. I'm going to break that bow! Come on, Riley. Move! Oh, I wonder what sort of a male role model he's got at home. Good luck, Riley. Oh. I missed miss. it! Miss again! I can't hit him! Miss again! Oh. I can't hit him! I can't hit him! No, he's gonna cry. Definitely gonna cry. Aww. Spit the dummy! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I can hit him! He's got a few issues, that child. When we tested the boys, 63% of them had problems dealing with their emotions. I used to have such bad time dealing with my emotions. He's such a sook. <laughs> this kid even looks like me when I was young. Seriously, is this a video from my primary school? Why do you have that reaction? Because I'm angry. I don't want it. Yeah. Look at Grace. She thought she'd get six, she got ten. Kara thought she'd get six, she got ten. All I'm going to tell you is this. At your age, Boys and girls have exactly the same strength. Yeah! Equality. Yeah, they're all the same until they hit puberty. Do you know that before? Nope. I've realised just how entrenched these differences are and that interventions in the classroom aren't going to be enough. Next time. Oh, the show is awesome. I actually want to follow this all the way through and just see what happens. I think they need to do those experiments in every classroom mm. to teach kids. Mm. I think they need to teach parents. Never underestimate yourself, bestie. I don't.
know how I know that I live with a girl? Yeah. yeah. I have this many pillows for my couch. Ready? One. One. Bearing in mind there's two people. Two. You would think you were done, wouldn't you? Three. Four. Five. And... Why five? And we have a throw. Last week, Channel 9's social experiment dating juggernaut was back with the return of... What do you call it again? Maths. Have you been doing your maths homework? Married at first, first sight. sight. I'm so glad this show's back on. 22 singles, all desperate to find love, take the ultimate leap of faith, marrying a complete stranger. Wait, so they don't even meet until the wedding day? No, they meet at the wedding. When you get desperate, you'll try every avenue. Have you reached that point yet? Do I look desperate to you? <laughs> Finding lasting love is harder than ever. You don't have to go on a bloody show to do it. You can go to the pub, then you meet somebody, yeah. and you have a drink. Yeah. You can say hello, how are you, how about it? You know. <laughs> Oh my god, I got shivers. The air conditioning's on. The experiment starts with couples being matched by professional relationship experts. Thousands of people have put their hands up to have us help them find love. What's what's going on with his hair? Yeah. Looks like he's put his finger in a bloody light socket. Something, something about <laughs> Mary. <laughs> <laughs> what's he been doing? Experimenting. The first single to be experimented on this year is no, Dean. My perfect wife would be. Tall, big tits, beautiful, no brain, slim girl, and loving your makeup and your nice shoes. That's what women are all about. And like, ew. In a relationship, I feel like I need to be the leader because I'm the man. Dean, he's a man's man. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Come ah. on, man. Love to be married to you. Men have lost a little bit of their masculinity in Australia. I think I'm ready ew. to have kids. Oh my <laughs> fucking, he's so caveman. Yeah, I can, I can relate oh, yeah. to that. A lot of guys are just afraid to be men now and they're just getting whipped by their women. Good luck. Good on you, mate. Good luck. <laughs> when you're not home, I'm the boss. Yeah, when I'm not okay? home. Okay? <laughs> Don't you forget it. The experts decide that the perfect match for Dean... Don't match anyone with him. ...is Tracy. I'm an old-fashioned girl when it comes to dating. I like to look after my man like he's the man. <laughs> I feel bad for her. I'm with you, baby. The way that Tracy decides to prepare for her marriage to Dean is by doing this. The first thing I did was started getting a little bit of Botox. A little bit of Botox. She looks like she likes just... She's being stung by a bee. Also looking to get my boobs done. <laughs> These guys are disgustingly perfect for each other. Oh, God. Here we go. <laughs> Massive relief. Just really good rig. And... What did he say? A good rig? Rig. Yeah, a good rig. Like a ship. What about a mine? He's not marrying a mine, Mick. He's marrying her tits, mate. She's got good tits. I'm not going to lie. Definitely kept looking down at her chestal area. Oh, my God! Yeah. He's just going to have a head in her chest. He's just going to be like... motivating all night. <laughs> goodbye soon. Married at First Sight returned on Tuesday. To contrast the sexual chemistry in the premiere was what happened the moment Bubbly Joe... I'm Bossy Jojo and I'm a whole lot of woman. Oh, it should be a lot to take on. ...met her husband, Unbubbly Sean. I don't think he's the happiest man no. on the planet. Awkward. <laughs> <laughs> this is the most awkward thing ever. Incorrect. That title belongs to What Happened That Night. I just need to undo me, then I can go and actually... Like, I want to take my dress off. <laughs> the old sneaky massage joy might just come out and uh, persuade him over. She's going to oh, eat him alive. But the mood was lifted with the final wedding. I'm sick of hearing the tradies get the ladies. Because who's not going to fall in love with a blokey plumber who loves his grandma? Yeah, but she got one. Okay. Oh. 
almost as much as he loves The Notebook. There's nothing better than watching my favourite rom-com. Oh, God! I'll marry him! Throw in a girl who's waited four years for Mr Right. Believes in falling in love to her Prince Charming. And let the happily ever after begin. She's dropped dead gorgeous. Oh. Oh. I want to be the man that you've been waiting to meet for the man of your dreams. Thank you. Oh. 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 He's bloody watched too many rom-coms in his life. <laughs> it's a beautiful, beautiful bride. Isabel, for goodness sake. She's lovely. Do you reckon she's going to be a lady? No. She hasn't kissed anyone for four years. First time she sees a penis, she's going to... When no one's home, I just walk around... Naked. Naked. Anyway... You're All of a sudden, I look out the window. Jesus Christ, Refe. Who there was, was a plumber in the van across the road. <sighs> and I'm sitting there. I'm not joking. He's here to fix your plumbing. Uh, I'll tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, I wouldn't mind a bit of plumbing. Over the summer break, the project welcomed its newest member to the team. The Sunday project. Oh, this is Project with um, Lisa. This is Lisa's debut. Oh, first day of work. It is so good to be here. My apologies. It's taken me about four years by my calculation. <laughs> oh, this is going to be great. I hope she just blitzes. Somebody stopped me in the street uh, this morning and said, Lisa, you're going from a nine to a ten. Yes. yes. Oh, I get it. Channel nine to channel ten. <laughs> Do you know why Lisa left Channel 9, you know? She wanted equal pay. What's his name, the Carl? Stupid O, she found out how much he was getting paid. And so she left and now she's here and this is probably better anyway. Absolutely. People have been so nice and, and everybody felt so warmly about the fact that I was joining the project. See, this is where I don't know how she'll go on here because she's no like a journalist. I think she's professional, she knows what she's doing. With the introductions out of the way, it was time for Lisa's first story. When a young Queensland couple decided to start a family, they knew a difficult road lay ahead. Beck was born with cystic fibrosis, an incurable disease that affects the lungs and digestive system. It meant having a baby would be dangerous. That's tough. But Beck's best mate since they started school together and who now has two kids of her own had an idea. She said, you know, it's going to be risky. I'm not going to be able to carry. And I said, well, I could probably carry a baby for you. That's friendship. I don't think there's anything more generous than this. And in May last year, Jess fell pregnant. If, like, my sister needed or something, I would 100% I would do that. I don't think I could do that. Be a surrogate. Mm. I wouldn't want to give a give it back. It'd be very hard. Would you do it? For Millie? I would have my own first and then suss out how much it hurts. <laughs> but in September, oh, there no. were four months before her baby boy was due, cystic fibrosis claimed Beck's life. Before the baby was born. Oh, oh God. Oh. Jesus. It was absolutely heartbroken for her that we got this far. Um, and she wasn't going to meet her baby. Oh. Of bringing up his son this is awful, Faye. Life can be it's shitty. It's been empty. It's just not the same without Beck. Any decision that I have to make, I always think, what would Beck do? At least in his grief, he's got him. Yeah. What do you say to this incredible woman? I think whatever I say isn't enough. Like, she's just an amazing person. Goosebumps, and I. Are you crying? No. You big sook. You're gonna hate me for this crying. They are such special human beings. Hamish. <laughs> you better not make us cry like that. Yeah, you? sorry about that. <laughs> See, bloody Lisa's on. They've made him cry the first night. Lisa Wilkinson with the goods on episode one. Great story. Beautiful story. It's so great to have you on the team. Looking forward to many more of that. The first one's down. It's really great. Bloody hell, didn't Lisa start off with a bang? Jesus Christ, Lisa. We've got a cup of coffee.
And then um, we're getting up and Gary went to take his inside. And all of a sudden, the waitress was coming. And she goes, oh, no, I'll get them. And on the garden, $10 note sitting on the floor. Try pick it up, went back and said, there's your tip. Oh, that's yeah. good. What about if it had been 50? Would have gone to me square rocket. <laughs> <laughs> what did you put on, oh, you have not put on Home and Away? Oh, I love Home and Away. Now in its 30th year, Channel 7's much-loved Soapy returned to our screens. Home and Away. Don't sing it. Watch out! Uh, there's been an accident. Oh, God. They're both injured. And on Thursday, we found out which reality star crashed her way into Summer Bay. Is she going to be OK? We don't know yet. Okay. Who is that in the bed? Is that Sam Frost? The Bachelorette? Is it? Oh. Is it? My name's Tori. You're in hospital. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, it is. So she's done with The Bachelor. And the Bachelorette, Hell's Kitchen. Then she was on radio. I don't think that Bachelorette's a natural springboard into something <laughs> like this, is it? This newcomer has been in a coma ever since the crash. Jasmine, squeeze my hand if you can hear me. See, I could get a job on a soap. I could be the man in the coma. Look, look. That's it. That's it. You're doing really well. Oh, good acting. Home and away. How long do you think before she wakes up? It can be a slow process, but it's all looking good. <sighs> She's recovered! It's a miracle. Heart rate's 180, breasts 22. She's What's happening? She's distressed. Okay, I'm going to start bagging. Paige, Munice is just on call. Oh, that's pretty full on. She's gone totally wacker. She's just seen the ratings from her and Rove's radio show. It's okay. We need some help me here. We need help. Excellent acting so far. This could be the best acting we see right now. <laughs> oh, this is bad. It's all right. It's all right. Okay. Who's the biggest actors to come out of Home and Away? We've had the Hemsworth. Naomi Watts. Isla Fisher. Heath Ledger. Danny Minogue's been in there. I couldn't tell you anyone from Home and Away. None. But Home and Away's newest star seems to have gone MIA. She's done the board. Do you know where the patient from that room is, Jasmine? Oh, my God. Oh, they've lost a patient. Oh, phone security and inform the doctor. Yeah. If you were the nurse and some random chick came in and asked where she was, would You'd you be... You'd fake and pretend you know where she is so you don't look stupid. It does matter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there she is. Still looking for her husband. Jasmine! Hey, are you OK? I can't find my rose! But what, what are you doing out here? <laughs> um... I don't know. This is absolutely atrocious. While Jasmine is rescued by a person she's never met, the rest of the bay turns up for the funeral of the person she crashed into. Where's, what's his name? Alf. Alfie. The person we're saying goodbye to, well, they've, they've had their life. Alf better say stone the crows or I'm turning this on. Flaming mangoes. Flaming galah. Most of the time, the cash cow rocks are 20 million. Could have picked a better time to advertise the cash cow during a eulogy. I know you've got a lot of questions. But don't worry, the cash cow's jackpotting tomorrow morning. <laughs> Your girl really made a difference here. It's like Alf's living forever. He's just not dying, man. Why do you want him to die? I'm just saying, he, everything happens to him and he's still alive in the show. Alf is the most resilient bastard going around. Oh, my God. Next week on Seven. Oh, not Alf. Oh, no. Does he die? Oh, is Alf dying? You jinxed him, Anastasia. He's going to die. Someone come to us and said, hey, you want to go to Summer Bay for no! holiday? No way! <laughs> It's not safe! You can just walk out of a hospital. The bloody bombs, there's everything. Hey, Brittany, what's that pimple in your nose? It's a cliff stud. Are you sure? I really didn't want you to get it done. Well, I got it done. I don't mind it. I think it looks good. Yeah, thanks, Dad. Yeah, no that thanks for the faith. Cool. No worries. Mum? Suck it. <laughs> <laughs> check out. I like the check out. They're clever boys. I bet you the best part of this show is going to be this tune. <laughs> On Tuesday night, the ABC launched the latest season of The Checkout. I love this show. I tell you, if it's no good, I'll be checking out. The show takes a satirical look at consumer affairs. It's all about what's in the supermarkets and all that, what, what branding and that shit. This episode reveals the truth about bed sheets. Talking sheet. Talking shit. Is that what she said? Sheets. 
They're literally just a rectangle of material you use while you're mostly unconscious. I do love a good sheet. A sheet's a sheet. You lie in it, you sleep, and that's it. But they can cost anywhere from $20 to $2,200. Who would buy sheets for $2,200? I just bought sheets. They were on sale. I saved $852. Oh. I'll spend hundreds at a sheet place. I wouldn't boast about that if I was you. If you want to be able to sleep at night after you buy sheets, <coughs> you... <coughs> mindfully woven textiles. They haven't really gone to central casting for the acting in this show, have they? That's my bed? I reckon it's annoying. It's, it's sati satire. Oh, really? Hotel Royale, the ultimate in luxury. Embassy Royale. So you get sucked in with this stuff? Yeah. One thing they make seem really important is thread count. It's all about the thread count. Many people assume a higher thread count means a better quality sheet. Oh, I like a good 800 to 1,000. I've got like 1,000 thread at the moment. I get 3,000. A higher thread count means higher quality, stronger... Yeah, this is the bullshit they give you. What's the truth? The maximum number of threads you can fit onto a square inch of fabric is generally no more than 400. Ah. So, thread count is a little bit... Bullshit. Sucked in. You bought 1,200 thread count. You got sold on thread count. 3,000. Bit ridiculous, darling. Your main consideration should really be what the fabric itself is made of. My mum bought me beautiful silk sheets, and on my wedding night, I stained them. Did you spill coffee or something? Yeah, yeah. something like that. <laughs> what to reject when you're expecting. Then the checkout takes a look at the wonderful world of... Beetle education. It's vital that your child gets a good education. Well, that seems fair enough. In the womb. There it is. Oh, this will be interesting. Starting with the Baby Plus prenatal education system. You fasten it to your belly and your baby gets its lesson. <laughs> Do people actually fall for this crap? It's learning right now. What are you teaching them how to do, be a DJ? It sounds like a mother's heartbeat. It's got a mother's heartbeat. It's just there. Is this for dead women? You know, you should also listen to this ultrasound music for the unborn child. Imagine how many stupid mums would buy yeah. this. Tender lullabies. Oh, my God, you made me play that exact one! That's good. Well, you will be tender after playing it through this $200 speaker that you stick straight up your... Please, no. You stick it where? Oh, what, they expect that to go up your... Vaginally. What? <gasps> Would you put this in your vagina? That's just an excuse to use a vibrator, isn't it? I just want the baby to listen to some Mozart. <laughs> listen, there is no evidence that playing music to your fetus makes it smarter. And putting earbuds here or anywhere could damage the fetus's ears. The world's gone fucking mad. <laughs> really interesting. Yeah. Jeez, we need to create something that stupid people are going to buy. Next time you're pregnant, you know not to play the music. Hey. <laughs> it's going to be a no next time. <laughs> we'll just keep practicing. No, the door's shut.